Hello, my friends. We see that over the past two months, the Russians have managed to seize Avdivka and advance nine kilometers beyond its borders. And uh, foreign publications um, seem to have begun justifying their lack of sufficient support for Ukraine. So they are already saying that the armed force of Ukraine had to retreat not only due to a lack of ammunition, but also due to a lack of manpower. Ukraine has performed miracles in pushing back Russia's Black Sea Fleet and reopening grain exports from Odessa. And it is conducting an air campaign against infrastructure targets in Russia, especially oil refineries, using homemade drones. It is hitting Russia so hard that America has become concerned about the global oil price. But this remains primarily a ground war. If Ukraine is dependent on its allies to provide it with most of the material it needs to fight the war, it must take the blame for being slow to recruit more soldiers. The average age of Ukraine's troops serving on the front line is 43. Although morale, according to reports, remains generally high, many of them are exhausted and need rotating. Russia has little difficulty recruiting contract soldiers, it can pay them amounts that seem extravagant in poor parts of the country. Mr. Musica reckons there is a steady flow of about 30,000 fresh soldiers to the front each month, enough to sustain for the foreseeable future the meat attacks that were used in Avdiivka. In the aftermath of Russia's sham presidential election, its defense minister, Sergei Shoigu, announced on March 20 the formation of two new armies, which will require an additional 300,000 to 400,000 soldiers. Despite political reluctance, it is clear that Ukraine must mobilize on a much wider scale than permitted under current law, which does not allow conscription below the age of 27. In December Ukraine's then commander-in-chief, Valery Zelazny, wanted to recruit a further 400,000 soldiers. But Mr. Zelensky refused to sign a bill that would have lowered the age of enlistment to 25. What are your thoughts on this matter? So write your opinion in the comments. Uh, and today, as expected, after regrouping, the occupants have begun actively storming Semenivka and Berdychi with seven attacks in a day. Here, the Ukrainian forces are practically semi encircled within a two kilometer and 300 meter stretch, making the situation very challenging. So, the occupants are shelling all positions and attempting to further storm them. Additionally, shelling in the area of Ocheretina continues. There is a likelihood that they will attempt to advance in this direction in the near future. So far, in a day, we see that the front line remains unchanged. But further south, battles are taking place for Pervomaiske. But the Russians here, as before, are facing continued failures. In the direction of Marinka, the occupies, as before, shell Krasnohorivka and Hyorhivka and in the area of Novomikhailivka. So, in addition to shelling, there is also a large number of assaults. 21 attacks were recorded in a day. However, the Ukrainian armed forces, as before, hold their defense and don't retreat, although the situation is extremely difficult and the occupies are pressing with great force. In the Bakhmut direction, today uh, the occupies conducted five attacks and are trying to advance in the areas of the villages of Bogdanivka, Ivanivska and Lishiv. Despite all the statements by the Russians, the Ukrainian side reports that there are battles underway there and the village hasn't been captured by the occupants. Therefore, the front line remains unchanged. Uh, at the same time, there is a huge number of shelling along the front line and in the Chasevyar area itself. So the occupants are preparing the entire territory for new assaults destroying all the fortifications of the Ukrainian forces. 
in the Siversk direction. Battles are also actively ongoing. Here, the Russians, as before, are attempting to storm Bilohorivka. But today, they changed the direction of the attack. So now, they are assaulting from the southern outskirts. But the Ukrainian forces still successfully hold their defense and destroy the advancing occupants. So, battles also continue in the area of the village of Vesela, but the activity is not the highest. Just a few attacks per day and the front line remains unchanged. In the direction of Krimina, battles in the area of the village of Terny and Yampolivka continue. So, it's difficult to imagine how many losses the Russians have suffered in this direction of the front because attacks are ongoing every day with several assaults being carried out. However, all of them are unsuccessful and the front line remains at change. In the area of Svatova, everything remains unchanged and shelling was recorded only near Novoyemorev. So there were no offensive actions conducted. In the Kupinsk direction, the situation continues to be tense uh, with shelling along the front line being reported. A single attack on Ivanivka yesterday was unsuccessful and they are not launching any new assaults. And now uh, let's move on to the southern direction. So in the direction of Buhledar. The occupies continue to conduct one or sometimes two assaults per day on Staromayorsk. However, they don't achieve any success. So the Ukrainian armed forces successfully maintain their defense and the front line remains unchanged. In the direction of Zaporizhia, the activity shows no signs of decreasing. Here, the occupies are storming Robotina and attempting to advance in the area of Perbove across the fields. However, all attacks in the area of Bilohiria were unsuccessful and today only shelling is reported there. In the direction of Kherson, the general staff uh, reports that the occupies conducted three unsuccessful assaults on the village of Krinke on the left bank and attempted to push the Ukrainian forces out of the foothold. However, the front line remains unchanged and most of the Russians have been eliminated. Although, uh, Russian war correspondents claim that no assaults are taking place at the end. So, we'll wait to see how events unfold. In the Kherson and Zaporizhia directions, a lull continues. No offensive actions were taken in the direction of Krinky and Rabatino. In the village of Krinky, ours again began to use fabs with UMPK. Basically, that's it. And finally. Unfortunately, the Ukrainian armed forces, for now, cannot expand this foothold. Unfortunately. Now, uh, let's turn to the situation on the border with Russia. So, Shalon continued there. And yesterday evening, new explosions were reported in Belharad. Therefore, as announced yesterday, uh, the Russians have begun an intensified mobilization. So, it was stated that they plan to gather 300,000 troops and march on Kharkiv. However, Shoigu made a statement that they don't need additional mobilization to create a buffer zone. Sergei Shoigu said that mobilization is not needed now. Answering the question of whether additional mobilization will be required to create a sanitary zone near the borders of the Belgorod region, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu said that this is complete nonsense. Meanwhile, according to Putin's opinion, Russia is currently fighting for its independence and survival as it has been attacked. 
как известно, борются за защиту своих жизненно важных интересов, за право самостоятельного, независимого, суверенного развития. И, к сожалению, наши недоброжелатели, наши конкуренты, противники вынудили нас защищать эти интересы вооруженным путем, бороться с теми, кого они вооружили, воспитали для борьбы с Россией на территории соседнего государства. И в сегодняшних условиях все, что мы делаем во всех сферах нашей жизнедеятельности, должно быть посвящено успеху России на этом направлении. Мы ни в коем случае не должны допустить никакой расхлябанности. Мы должны настраивать все органы власти, всех граждан страны на строгое соблюдение действующих норм и законов. Мы должны быть собраны и эффективны. Also, US Secretary of State Anthony Blinken made a statement regarding the situation in Krokus. Thank you. And I would Thank add you. only one thing to what Fouad said, which is, I think it's very important that, unfortunately, we be reminded that ISIS remains uh, a real threat. Uh, and uh, despite the very good work that we've done over the years in uh, dealing with that threat uh, and uh, mitigating it significantly, we're reminded by the horrific attack Uh, outside of Moscow just a few days ago, that ISIS remains uh, a potentially potent force and one that we have to continue to deal with. We uh, mourn the loss of uh, so many innocent lives, people going to a concert outside of Moscow. This is a very uh, unfortunate reminder that uh, we have to continue to deal with ISIS and make sure that it doesn't uh, revive and regenerate. Thank As we you. suffer from ISIS. And that's all from me. Don't forget to like this video subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.